Okay, so this is going to be a quick video on the cube van project. You can see turbo is no longer installed in this van. Uh, I have the up pipes out. Pulling the turbo out is going to be part of another video I'm putting up. Uh, that's going to be put up as soon as I'm done with this. Got the up pipes out. Surprisingly easy on this van actually. Um, yeah, this is what it'll look like when it's all taken apart. So this one's going to be on disassembly of the, uh, I believe it's a GTP 38, something like that. Anyway, it'll be how to take these apart. You excuse me, all the bolts and everything are loose. Yeah, yeah. I had to take it apart to verify that this one needed rebuild. Um, so this will be quick and easy. Better to explain quicker. Um, so you're going to start off, take all the case bolts out. Of, or the, uh, all the, the bolts off of the compressor housing. And then you just pop it up and off. Don't worry about how it came off. It can only go back on one way. So you'll see how it's set up here. I know this is dirty. I'm going to clean it up before I rebuild it. Uh, this is one of the reasons I'm rebuilding this turbo. There's uh, chunks missing and things on the compressor wheel. It's been dusted pretty good. So this thing just threads on and off. So you're going to have to do, I'll show you on the other side of it. That's the other thing too. It's been, you know, it's got some, got some damage on it. It had quite an excessive amount of shaft play as well. I can't really show you now that it's all taken apart, but uh, yeah. So that guy just spins off like a normal, you know, just spin it off. Uh, you may have to hold the uh, turbine side. I usually end up having to. Uh, if you do, I believe, nope. Where is it? Hold on. So for the impeller side, it's actually a 16 millimeter. Um, can't remember what the exhaust side is, but I usually just put a pair of vice grips on the exhaust side. Um, in this case, I, I doesn't matter. The whole thing's getting replaced. Um, then you take these four 12 point bolts out. Now these are all your 12 point bolts on the turbocharger are going to be eight millimeter 12 points. So you will need a 12 point socket set or uh, just a end of a wrench. And there's these four bolts, they come out, uh, four, I don't know, I only have them finger tight. So when you take yours apart, the compressor wheel is going to sit flush in this hole and all of these bolt heads are completely recessed. So next, takes a little bit of prying sometimes, but you pop this cover off, this inside of the compressor housing. Make sure you check it out. It's not all damaged and wrecked. They shouldn't be. You'll notice there's a gasket there. That's important to change that. It actually holds the oil pressure in the turbo. Again, don't worry about what orientation you leave this in. It can also only bolt on one way. If you notice, these holes are not perfectly squared. They are offset slightly. So you cannot screw it up when you're putting it back on. Uh, so now when you're doing your rebuild, you'll see everybody's going to try and sell you on a 360 degree bearing rebuild. So what that does is it replaces this guy with something that is completely wrapped around this center section of this bearing. Um, quick side note with this, that just pops right up. Might have to do a little bit of pulling on it, but usually they just pop right up. This guy sits like so in here. Now you'll notice when you're looking at it, see how mine sits not quite right in there no oh, there you go it'll only sit in there one way just like how this housing only goes on one way so if i try to clock it another way you'll notice it won't go in it's designed so that it can only go in that way so you can't screw it up same thing with the 360 rebuild kit they design it the same way so that's pretty straightforward now there should be four bolts holding the cartridge to the exhaust side of the turbo um, you don't necessarily have to take it apart if you're just want to do a quick, you know, swap of your compressor wheel, for example, which I, I would have done on this one if the turbine wasn't damaged. Um, I would have just changed the wheel out and then we would have seen how long it would have lasted. Um, but yeah, there'll be four of them. Don't worry if one's missing, it's quite normal. They'll rattle out and fall out over time. So you will need something like that to get into the these two here. You can try and fiddle in here with a wrench. Uh, it doesn't usually work out. These things are usually in there pretty tight just because they are 
you know, heat cycled in the exhaust. So again, finger tight. I've already had this turbo completely disassembled. So there's going to be one. And there is number two. So depending on the kit that you buy for rebuilding your turbo, it should come with all new hardware. Still don't lose it. It's easy to tell which ones were your exhaust bolts just because they're rustier. And the ones that were on the cool side stayed with the paint on and they're nice and clean. So now, this is where you might be thinking, oh boy, well now what do I do? I broke a bolt off. Don't worry, I did as well. It's not hard to extract them. Um, the other thing is, this, uh, this the snail shell here is quite hard to get off of the cartridge itself. There's no gasket in there. It, it's literally just fit in. I already popped it off. So one thing that I'll do, I'll kind of hold it up a little bit and then just give this some gentle taps around all the way around with, with my hammer, just very light. You don't want to strike it too hard. Just give it some nice taps, tap, 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 tap all the way around and eventually it'll pop right out. And this is what you're left with. Now, you might be sitting here thinking, I can't get this turbine out. This is why it was, you can see it was hit. Something folded those blades over. Um, but yeah, so you might be thinking, how do I get this thing out of here? It won't come out. I'll just give you a minute and I'll show you how I do it. So what I usually do is I thread the turbine, or the, sorry, the uh, compressor wheel back on, and then I'll just give it a nice little tap against something relatively solid, just like that. It is kind of a friction fit, so that you see there's more bearings in there. So once you pop it free like that, this is why it's, uh, if it'll focus on there, that little seal there, that's why it's kind of a pop fit in there. That's a friction fit seal. So this is what the rest of your bearings will look like. This is how it'll be on there inside of the cartridge. Set that down. That's all junk. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. That's inside of your turbo housing. Down in there. That's where all the oil and everything comes through. And this is what the cartridge looks like. Generally, these don't fail. Usually, you can get away just putting all new bearings and everything in it. Call it a day. Uh, if you do notice that this turbine shaft is good still, you don't need to order a turbine shaft. You can reuse this. But like I say, mine was struck with something. Somebody's been in this truck before. Um, so I, I'm replacing it with a balanced assembly. Um, talk to uh, Fernando with RD2FS. He can hook you up with some all the stuff you'll need. But yeah, so there's that. There's two bearings there and a little cage. Uh, pop them loose there's one there's a little cage and there's number two so those all pop off and then you need to pop off that little seal on there as well you'll need to replace that um, and then that's what your bearings and everything should look like now you notice those don't look too bad but there is there was a substantial amount of shaft play on this um, the other thing too if you notice that oil is coming out of your exhaust and it's really smoky and it's just dripping oil out of the tailpipe. This is usually the seal that has failed. If it'll focus. Get in there. Come on. There. That you that's indicative of this seal failing. That's what happens. So if you ever notice that, that's what's happening. And if you're noticing a lot of oil in your oil cooler, then it's the seals on this side somewhere are bad. Um now, yeah, now, back to the snail shell here, you'll notice I have the exhaust back pressure valve and everything taken off. That's because we're deleting it. I have them taken off inside of the truck. It's still attached to the pedestal. It's just the way I do it. Um, but you'll notice that, so when you have yours apart, there will be an extra housing here. Uh, when you rebuild your turbocharger, I, I live in a cold climate and I still delete these things just because they are prone to failure, troublesome. I don't like them. Um, some trucks I leave them on at the customer's request, but usually I tend to take them off. That is again, I believe they were also 8mm 12 point bolts. I don't think there's any 12 point bolt that isn't an 8mm on this turbo. Um, now with these suckers here, you'll notice these are really hard to take loose. Um, in my case, this one in particular was the one that was, no sorry, it was this one was the one that was missing. And this one is the one I broke off. So what I did to get it out, I just heated it up and I hit, an, hit it with an extractor, popped right out. 
Nice and simple. It's just the same thing as extracting any other bolt. Make sure you run a thread chaser through it. Because again, like I say, somebody's been in this before and this was a little cross-threaded. That's why it broke off. Um, so yeah, there's a quick, simple, how to disassemble. I'll do a whole video on putting them together and what you're supposed to do. But uh, in case you don't see that video and you need to get your thing back together before that comes up, when you're putting it back together, make sure, make sure, make sure that these, these bearings aren't dry when you have the turbo put in back into the van. You want to make sure that they are pre-lubricated. So the way that you do that, just move these real quick. So the way you do that is you look on the bottom, here's your oil feed and oil drain ports. Just pour oil in there, fill it up all the way if you want to, that's what I tend to do, and give the impeller wheels a good spin to make sure there's oil all in those bearings. And the other thing I'll do too is I dip them in oil when I'm putting this thing together. So just so that way I make sure that there's lubrication and that they don't spin dry for any, por any period of time for any reason. One other quick thing to note, you'll notice that this one does not have a wastegate on it um, this turbocharger I I believe none of the vans have wastegated turbos I believe they're all non wastegated uh, they are also non intercooled so these are just like all the older body style 73s at 94 and a half to 7 uh, none of them were at least to the best of my knowledge none of them were wastegated and none of them were intercooled same concept here um, if you take a look at the exhaust back pressure valve housing, there it is. No wastegate, nothing in there. Um, getting rid of this pedestal. Yeah. So just just in case you're wondering why it looks different, there is no wastegate on the van chassis. Um, the the wastegate's not that hard to figure out. There's just a little C clip that you have to pull off on the back, but I. If you can avoid taking the um, uh, the wastegate actuator apart, I would until you get it out on a bench. Because, like I say, otherwise you're going to lose a little C clip that holds the rod onto the actual uh, wastegate port. Um, and I I don't know where you can just go buy one of those. It's yeah yeah. I've never lost one, so I've never had to look. But uh, yeah, that's that's the uh, if you're, if you're case anybody's wondering, that's why these, these ones just don't have wastegates on them. So, yeah, like I said earlier, I think it was my parts. going to be another couple of weeks. And then I'll be able to put, the, uh, put this thing back together. And we'll go through the break-in process there. Um, but uh, in case, again, you need to know, basically just for first 200 kilometers, I don't know, what is that in miles? 100 and, 180 miles or so. Just go nice and easy with it. Don't be crazy on it or nothing. Let's, you know, let everything work itself in. You want to go at varying throttles positions so that you have varying levels of boost and things like that. I mean, you don't you don't really have to do that, but it's just one of this is one of those things. Do you want to do it the proper way or do you want to do it the way that works? I, I've done it both ways, doesn't seem to make a difference to me. I, I still prefer to break stuff in, but yeah, that's that's that in a nutshell. So Hopefully my parts show up soon. I can get this thing back together. In the meantime, I guess I'll, I'll do the rear diff oil and finish tidying up my wiring in the back. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.